Good morning, Wake Up Grace Point. How are you today? Hey, remember me, Jeremiah Johnson? I'm the Wake Up Grace Point guy. Remember that? Uh, seems like so long ago. Wake up, Grace Point. Good to be with you today. It's a moment where we take uh, take a moment to encourage you, to pray for you, give you a little encouraging word to start your day. Uh, we at our local church, Grace Point, which is, you know, you're on the Grace Point, someone got a Facebook page right now, but we are following up the aftermath of a beautiful event called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames, where we got to see a lot of people get saved and give their hearts to the Lord. And, and that's awesome. And I'm learning there's there's really three things I think I, I really love to do. Number one, as I love doing outreach event stuff like that, is is so much fun. Obviously, it's work, effort, energy, but I, I love it so, so much. So I really get into that. Number two, there's nothing like a good building project, if you will. And so we are getting ready to now step into a sanctuary remodel project for our church, which will take place over the next few weeks, next month, if you will. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're excited for that. And now I'm having to believe for that. And so anyway, praise the Lord. Uh, and then thirdly, I love to make videos and do create content like I'm doing right now on this video. So thank you so much. Wake up Grace Point. So those are things I really enjoy to do. And, and I'm usually going all out in one or the other. So if I'm doing all the Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flame stuff, I can only think about that and do that. Then the building stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still pump out some videos for you guys uh, on this Wake Up Grace Point. But the thought I want to present you, to you today is in regards to prayer. And I've, I've brought this up a few times on Wake Up Grace Point, a book I've been reading called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. Excuse me. How many of you are normal people? Yes, we're normal people, but prayer is a very important part of our life, our spiritual life journey, and we have to keep, you know, stirring that up in Jesus' name. So uh, the thought I want to present you today specifically with the idea that our church is getting ready to step into this remodel project and, you know, it costs money and, you know, it's, it's stressful because for me as the pastor, I want to make sure that, you know, I stay in budget and we don't want to waste money and, you know, we want to make sure we value every penny that is spent from carpet to lights and all those kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't know about you guys when you remodel or do something like that. You just wish it could be cheaper, you know, but you don't want to do a junkie because like this is the Lord's house, right? We're doing this for God. So we want to bring excellence. We don't want to do this little cheap, cheesy job. And so you get all those things in your, in your brain rolling around. But uh, today it was really powerful. Uh, I was reading just a story I'm going to read to you real quick. And the thought is, what if we just pray to God for everything we need? What if we just do that? What if we just pray and believe that God will meet our needs, both our individual needs, our family's needs, our church's needs. And if we could just do that, will God do it? Uh, the answer should be yes. But let me share with you this story, okay? It says, few people in modern times have demonstrated the power of petitionary prayer most powerfully and consistently than the 19th century philanthropist, Pastor Greg Mueller, who started 117 schools cared for 10,024 orphans, educated 120,000 children, and was accused of, and was accused of, the, listen to this, of raising the poor above the natural state. His legacy is made even more remarkable by the well-documented fact, instead of appealing for money and making his financial needs publicly known, Mueller, or Mueller, trusted God to fund his vast operation, or this vast operation, purely through the power of prayer, raising more than 97 million in today's money in this way. So he had a decision, right? Uh, God put this calling on him to start schools, take care of children, and it was going to be expensive. It was going to be a big endeavor. And instead of asking and petitioning and, you know, trying to get money from all these uh, places, you know what he did? He said, I am going to choose to pray and prayer is going to be my source of believing God for the income that is needed. And in his life, you can read more in depthly. He saw miracles of supernatural provision that flowed into his ministry in his life because he chose to pray. He said, I'm not going to waste all this time begging people for money. 
I'm going to pray and God's going to provide. And it just, to me, it was a great encouragement today as a pastor who, you know, has responsibility and leadership in, in a local church where, you know, sometimes, again, we have a project like this that costs money and we've asked people in our church to partner with it and step out in faith and give financially. And you can do that at grace.org or whatever, you know, you can do that. And I encourage you to do that. But, you know, I know today um, where I'm at is rather than, you know, get on wake of grace point and try to beg people for money that I, I took hold of that and said, you know what, I can pray and I can believe God through prayer that he will provide everything that I need, everything that I'm believing for, because I can ask, I can ask God. Uh, and if I ask with the right mode of the right heart, the right spirit, that God will provide in Jesus name through the power of prayer. What a powerful story. I want to take hold of that. I want you to take hold of that today in your individual life for just a moment that you can say, what do you, what are the needs in your life today? Your individual needs. Why don't through the power of prayer, you request and present that to God? Myself, right? Individually. Things that I'm needing over church, I'm leading, etc. Why don't I, through the power of prayer, choose to believe in God? I mean, this guy, the result was, you know, $97 million that flowed through his ministry to accomplish the work of all these things through the power of prayer. You know, one thing that is very interesting as well. So, you know, I'm referring to the building project that we're doing and, you know, the, the, the monies that it costs to do that particular project. Then, and I think of missionaries in our church, we support missionaries each and every month, 60 missionaries. Uh, and, and it's amazing. And we support them and those missionaries. Basically what they do is they go around and ask for support and build a budget and all those kind of things. But, you know, this truth that I'm presenting to you today is I'm presenting to you individually. I'm, I'm presenting this truth to churches. And you know what? Shall I dare present this to maybe some of you that are a missionary listening today on Facebook? Why don't you choose through the power of prayer to believe God for supernatural provision. Take take at least a portion. The, the time that you're allotting to ask other people for money, why don't you allot that same portion of time in prayer to believe God for supernatural provision? Listen, I'm, I'm presenting you a truth that I'm challenged with today, that I'm thinking about like, oh Lord, I need this, I need that. Oh, I'm believing for this, I'm believing for that. Why don't I choose through the power of prayer to believe God? Because he can do it. And he is a God of supernatural provision. I've seen it before. I know he'll do it. I know sometimes I revert back to my, my carnal nature and struggles and all those kind of things. But guys, God is an amazing God. And through the power of prayer, we can believe him for supernatural and powerful provision in our life. Amen. So I, you know, I'm not going to, you know, withhold you from you know, giving or participating in our building project, you're right. You can give a financial contribution. I'd appreciate it. But again, the goal is today is we're saying, you know what? Let's believe God. Let's pray. Let's through the power of prayer, make sure that that's our first commitment and our first priority because that that's trust, right? To uh, th th that's a sign of trust and faith in God is to say, Lord, I'm not going <laughs> to go beg for money. God, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to trust you and you will do it in Jesus name. How about I pray for you today? How about I pray for what's going on in your life? And, and why don't you grab hold of this truth today? And why don't you begin to pray and pray for what's needed in your life and know that there is a God of supernatural provision that you can turn to, that you can pray to. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, can we pray together today? Father, thank you today. I thank you for this truth that I am challenged with personally, Lord God. I think of some of the things that I have going on in my life that I'm believing for, that I need provision for. Well, Lord, today I come to you and I ask, God, I ask for provision, supernatural provision to come from places I don't see or even know, Lord Jesus. And it'll come from your hand and by you and not by me having to do it. So Lord, I love you and I thank you today. I know that you'll do that individually. I know that you'll do that for our church grace point. And Lord, today I pray for your people today, God. Lord, help them to pray, help them to believe, help them to say, you know, Lord, I'm not gonna try and do everything on my own, but through the power of prayer, I will believe in you and I will trust in you today in Jesus name. Amen. Hey guys, wake up Grace Point. Thanks for joining me today. Please check out what's happening in the life of our church at gracepointag.org or you can check out our Facebook page, which you're on right now, our YouTube channel, Grace Point Daily, our podcast. You guys are awesome. And uh, I am going to 
talk to you guys next time.